All right, here is the next function we're going to be studying, uh, square root functions. So let's go ahead and type this into Desmos so that we can get this graphed on our notes. So I'm just going to get Desmos pulled up. Um, to type in the square root, uh, you can use the keyboard down here and just hit the square root, or you can type SQRT and get the square root that way. And then I'm going to go ahead and click edit list and pull up the table. And you'll notice that um, for all these negative values for X, it says undefined because you're not supposed to square root a negative. And so I'm going to fill up my table with positive values and I'm going to avoid all these decimals. So go ahead and put the cursor after the two and I'm gonna press enter a bunch, a bunch of times and get all these um, perfect squares in here. So one is a perfect square, four is a perfect square, nine is a perfect square. Those are the numbers that are gonna be easier to graph. So I'm gonna graph zero, zero, one, one, four, two, and then nine, three, because those are gonna be the points that are gonna be easiest for me to plot. So go ahead and put those points in your table, zero, zero, one, one, uh, four, two, and nine, three. We have some extra space there, but that's okay. I didn't fill out my whole table. Uh, because of that extra space. But I'm going to go ahead and graph those points and I'll show you what your notes should look like. Should look something like this. So here's a square root graph and it only has an arrow on one end. You'll notice that the other end um, kind of stops suddenly. So this right here is the locator point. It stops suddenly and then it goes forever in the opposite direction. Uh, you can also see that on Desmos if you look at it. So over here, like this one, we can see, yep, it stops right there, but this side over here, it just keeps going. So you can kind of zoom, we can zoom way out. We can see like, yep, it's gonna keep going over there. All right, so let's keep going in these notes. We have all of our transformations here. So the A value, if the A value is negative, um, the transformation is going to be a reflection um, over the x-axis. Uh, if the A value is greater than one, it's a vertical stretch. If the A value is less than one, it's a vertical compression. So that is the same as what we are used to um, this whole time that we've been doing our transformations. For the H value, if we have a positive H, the graph has been shifted to the left. If we have a negative H, the graph has been shifted to the right. If we have a positive K, the graph has been shifted up. If we have a negative K, the graph has been shifted down. Uh, just like the last set of notes in this unit, um, we do not have a vertex. This point right here is not called the vertex. We're going to go ahead and just call it a locator point. Uh, it's not even really the middle of the graph. It's kind of like the starting point of the graph. Um, and you get it from the H value and the K value. So let's look at an example of this. Uh, for this graph right here, y equals negative square root of x plus five minus seven. The transformations would be reflect over x, left five and down seven. And the locator point or the starting point would be negative five, negative seven negative five, negative seven. So I'm gonna go left five, down seven, put a dot there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and graph this on Desmos so I can see where the rest of the points are for this graph. So I've got y equals negative SQRT x plus five uh, and then negative seven okay minus seven uh, there is the graph right there so i'm going to make my table show up 
and I need these values right here. These are negative values. And so I need more negative numbers on my table. So I'm just going to press enter a few times and I have to type them myself, which is so inconvenient. I think that's as many as we're going to be able to graph maybe six. Yeah. So yeah, because the the beginning point is negative five, negative seven, and we just got our undefined point. So once you see this, once you see undefined, uh, that's a good sign. And then your starting point, because that means you went far enough that you can't get any points to the left of your starting point. So negative five, negative seven, I'm going to graph negative four, negative eight, and then I'm going to graph negative one, negative nine, and then I could probably... Oh, I don't, I can't do any more after that. I don't think they're going to be, ooh, four negative 10. I can do that one. Four negative 10. I thought I was done, but I wasn't. Okay. So I got all those points graphed. Now let me go ahead and draw that curve. There we go. Okay. So here's our definitions for vertex or locator point domain and range. Remember the domain is the X values. The range is the Y values. Now in our last um, set of notes for graphing for this unit, the domain and the range was kind of boring uh, because you didn't have to really pay attention to those answers. The graphs went forever to the left. They went forever to the right. Uh, same thing with increasing and decreasing. The answers were kind of boring. They're a little bit more interesting this time because we have a stopping point for our graph. It doesn't go forever to the left or forever to the right. Sorry, it doesn't go forever to the left. It does go forever to the right. Uh, but because it has a stopping point, it makes some of our answers a little bit more interesting. So um, when I look for my domain, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to care what the vertex is. So this vertex or locator point, as we're going to call it in this situation, is negative 1, negative 3. And for the domain, I care about that because the graph stops at the locator point. So for how far left does it go? It goes left to the locator point and then it stops. So it goes to negative one. And then how far right does it go? Well, it goes to an arrow. So for the domain, it goes from negative one on the left to infinity on the right. Now, infinity always gets a parenthesis because you can never actually touch that number, but negative one right here, that's a number we can touch. So that's going to be a bracket. So we're going to remember that domain has to do with X values. Okay, now for our range, how far down do we go? How far up do we go? Well, we're going to look at the Y coordinate of the locator point. So how far down does the graph go? It goes down to negative three. How far up does the graph go? It goes up to infinity. So we're going to write that down for the range. From down to up, of course, the infinity is a parenthesis. Uh, but negative 3, that's an actual number we can see. We can put our finger on it. So that's going to be a bracket. So remember, your range is always your y values. All right, increasing and decreasing interval, same thing. Uh, we know these are both going to come from X values. So if I look at the picture of my graph that I have, my stick figure is starting here. And again, we're going to have kind of like the last set of graphs that we looked at. We're only going to have one of these answers. So I can see that my stick figure is decreasing. He's walking downhill. So my answer for increasing interval would be none. But the answer for decreasing is a little bit more interesting because he starts at this X value, which is the X value from the locator point. And the locator point is positive three, positive six. And he starts at the X value of the locator point. So he starts at positive three. And then he goes all the way to a right arrow, which is an infinity. So the decreasing interval is from three to infinity. Now we always do a parenthesis for infinity. 
over here, we always ask um, to be able to figure out if it should be a parenthesis or a bracket. We say, is he actively walking downhill when he's at that point? And usually when we ask ourselves that, he's like in between like uphill and downhill. But this time the whole thing is downhill and it's not an infinity downhill. It's like a number downhill. So we can put a bracket here. We can say three is a number where he's actively walking downhill. It's right there. It's not an arrow, so it's not a number I can't reach, uh, but it's actually a point that's there. Now, if you put a parenthesis, uh, if you're used to increasing and decreasing intervals always being parentheses, and so you just automatically put a parenthesis there, that's fine. I will not mark you down. So if that's something that you want to memorize, increasing and decreasing intervals are always parentheses, that is totally okay. Even if you took the like smarty McFarty math and took calculus and put parentheses there, nobody would mark you down. You would get that correct. Okay. Um, and that's because that's, that's a definition thing of the smarty McFarties that they're okay with putting parentheses. All right. Uh, next section, maximum and minimums. Uh, we're looking for our mountaintops and our valleys. And again, for these types of graphs, we're not going to have any. No mountaintops, no valleys. Doesn't mean that we don't have high points and low points. We just don't have any that look like mountaintops. Uh, X-intercepts and Y-intercepts, we're going to have those though. So let's go ahead and graph this next example and um, see what the x and y intercept are. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to Desmos, get this one typed in. So I've got y equals 2 and then the square root. So again, I'm typing sqrt, square root x plus 3, and then a minus 1 on the end. I'm going to hit the home button over here to go back to my regular view. And then here's my x intercept and my well x intercept here y intercept over there so my x intercept is negative 2.75 comma 0 my y intercept is 0 comma 2.464 okay and then last we have to go and see what our end behavior is so i'm going to say Let's look for our left arrow. Let's look at our right arrow. And this is probably the funkiest part of everything about this particular function is that if you look for a left arrow, there isn't one. So if I say look to the left arrow, Look at the left arrow. Is the left arrow going up or down? <laughs> I can't tell because it's literally not there. So I'm going to say Y is undefined. Look at the left arrow. There isn't one. Look at the left arrow. There isn't one. So as I look at the left arrow, I can see that it's undefined because it's not there. But I can look at the right arrow. If I look at the right arrow, I can see that it's going down. So I'm going to write negative infinity for that one.